Okay. We're on. All right. That's our intro music. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. That's my alarm Dan to and say Anya, hey. Dan and Anya's back again. Uh, yeah, and we've got that's our intro song. I hope you guys like that. We <laughs> we spent a lot of money, by the way, putting time and effort into that music, that production. Anyway, so we're doing a, a wonderful topic today that I'm going to let Anya's talk about it first. But to her credit, this woman, you, you guys do not realize the gem that we have before us. This giant lump of coal that compressed down to a diamond that we call Agnes. Anyway, <laughs> took 30 minutes of Neville Goddard. 30 minutes of Neville Goddard. 30 minutes. And turned it into a minute and a half. How do you do that? <laughs> anyway, Agnes, tell us, what are we talking about today? Well, we are going to dissect today Sammy's question. Now... Sammy's question was one of the very first Neville things that I used to dissect to then apply to all the things that were going wrong in my life. And it was a really good template. So for those people that haven't listened to Sammy's question, Dan and I will put it in the description of our YouTube so you can listen to the whole 30 minute thing. But for today, I'm going to read the little nugget that's within this and we're going to discuss this and we're going to apply it to relationships and specific people and exes. And it was a, and that's minute, what we're going a minute and a half. Set your watch, yeah. people, I dare you. I'm going to <laughs> you can time it. Shoot. Okay, so it goes like this. Neville is actually talking to a guy that's at one of his lectures to give you a bit of background. So he says, and the guy is saying to Neville, I've been doing everything you say, but I'm still not manifesting. And he was talking about money, but we're going to apply it to the subject of relationships. If you're not getting what you want, there is something you haven't understood. When I speak of feeling, I do not mean emotion, but I accept the acceptance of the fact that the desire is fulfilled. And you can think that you did that, but you can know for sure if you haven't achieved your goal, you don't have acceptance. The reason you don't have acceptance is because you're still thinking of it and rather than thinking from the goal. That is all there is to it. And if you're thinking of the goal rather than from the goal, you can do that for 10 years and nothing will happen. But the instant you think from your, from, your world will change. All cause is spiritual. If your world is not the way you want it, there is some imaginal act in your mind that is keeping the unwanted experience alive. So what do you want to say about that, Dan? Well, I've, that's actually one, just again, I'm impressed. <laughs> very, very, very <laughs> impressive. Because I watched that 30-minute video more than once, uh, more than twice even. And uh, yeah. it is um, it is impressive. Now, the one question and i guess we I, I i'm hoping now's the time to bring this up so i'm going to uh <laughs> so <laughs> Go ahead. that's how we're playing this um uh, when we experience doubt i think this is a question because i always like to think of like what what would people in in that watch us you know think about or what would be the questions yep. that we would think they would ask and it would be so i've done this wonderful of the goal instead of from the goal right i do this yep. great work i get myself to that awesome feeling right that knowing that the creators within me, all these wonderful things that I know to be true, especially if I've studied Neville in any sort of way, shape or form. Yeah. What happens during the day when I experience doubt? What do I do mm. to, you know, do I just like yeah. prune my thoughts? Like he would say, right. Do I do his pruning technique or whatever and, 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 and handle it that way and I'm good. Or do I do more imagining work? I mean, again, I can see all the different questions that people would mm. come from. So of course, I'm curious yeah. what the diamond has to say on this. Okay. Uh, well, on, yes. <laughs> doubt during the day, because we're human, is going to happen. But what happens is, is you're sliding back into thinking of. Right, right. Over time, you kind of go back to defaulting your old way of thinking. So you're going from thinking of, and we're going to use the relationship as an, as an example. Ooh, I have an you, idea. We could talk about specific people. Yeah. No one ever Gee, does that's that. New. No one ever does that. <laughs> no, it's going to really be first ever. God, anyway. we've never talked about that. No. That should be a good topic. I know, yeah. <laughs> no one will even, we'll like probably have, hardly have any viewers. I know, I know it sucks, but 
I think we should do it anyway, just for the sake of it. Anyway, oh, I interrupt. Oh, God. I get it. So, the day. thoughts during the day. So, you slide back into your doubt and then you're in of it. You're thinking of it because when, as soon as your doubt kicks in, you start feeling the negative emotion of it because doubt's not a positive thing. It makes you feel not good in the gut. He specifically so, says the devil, by the way. In his yeah, he calls it devil <laughs> or which, Satan. He which, talks about that, which I know, kind of like, I went, Whoa. oh, okay. I know, and you, yeah. you pull back and you're like, all right. So anyway, but yeah, no, I think it's kind of, <laughs> for the time, you know, it was the 50s or whatever. That was the, Exactly, the that was the time. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, and what's great is it's 2017 now and we yeah. can actually – package it in 2017 we actually know what's safe language <laughs> yeah we know it is. we are sure we've done scientific studies no i'm totally kidding we i just made that up people i swear i just made that up that is not true we do not know i've totally forgotten your question so i was when asking about doubt during in, the day it? it creeps in and you talk about how we're yeah. backsliding down towards the um the uh yep. the doubt the cycle is not uh, being of the goal instead of from the goal and yeah. you're basically going to share with us how to turn that back around or okay. as Gloria Stefan yeah. would say, turn the beat around. <laughs> you want to start singing that now? Turn the beat around. <laughs> yeah, no, anyway. That's, yeah, that we don't good. want to torment people. Anyway. You I'm, won't have to you, you don't have to worry about copyright because it no, was only yeah. like under three seconds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and not good. So we're okay. We're okay. Okay. Yes. So you've got a doubt happening about your specific person. Like, oh, um, does he really want to be with me? I think he's just using me for sex because I hear this one a lot. Yeah. He, he's just here to hook up or she's just here to hook up. I hear that a lot in Friends emails. Friends with benefits, right? What, yeah. What do I do? So you having this doubt and you start sliding into of-ness, which is he's just wanting me for sex. She's just wanting me for sex. I don't think they really love me. I don't think she really loves me. And you stay in that state. So now you're locked into, as Neville calls it, the old man, which is the old state. So to get yourself out of there, you have to change this because that's where it starts. You have a thought here and then it generates a feeling in your stomach and in your heart and you start to feel awful. So to fix it, you got to reverse engineer and start back up here and you've got to go, bad feeling, i got to get back up here and i got to change my thought. What kind of thought would somebody who really believes and living from it, what would they be thinking? I love my specific person and I know they love me. I know we're connected. I know that we are getting closer and closer. I know we understand each other. So you get right out of I'm being used. I'm being used for sex. I'm just a hookup. I'm just a friend right. with benefits because that's all your projection, which is the old stuff, which is stuff you've done for years, yeah. which is why you've been reliving it for years and years and years. So you've got to just stop doing that. It's, yeah, it's all about, and that's what I've been trying to really just hone home lately, at least yeah. on my side of it, is a lot of what we're talking about truly, truly, the nuts and bolts. If we want to break it down in the two simplest forms is one, controlling thoughts and two yep. is controlling your feelings, how your feelings. And yes. they work together. These two yes. are constantly yes. firing together. And when we let this one shoot us off into one direction that sucks, then we don't, we don't, yep. you know, we, we just screw our entire energy up, yeah. which spirals it down. And that's what you mean by the sliding thing to use the, it, it it's slides. exactly yeah. what it is. And the yeah. way to turn it back around is the opposite of what we did to get ourselves to exactly. that bad place. So it's, and you've got to, you got to create the habits of someone who has a loving relationship. Someone who has a loving relationship with themselves does not have those kind of thoughts. Someone that has a loving relationship with someone else does not activate that version of them. There's no reason that's to think what you about do. it. That's not no, a concern. That's you not don't, a fear. No. And that's usually what it comes down yeah. to is I'm afraid they're going to do or yeah. someone else did yeah. something to me 12 years ago and I'm afraid yeah. it's going to happen again. And it's yeah. like, well, that's... That's how you yeah. keep that activated, like you said, and, and exactly. Yeah. That's how we keep ourselves from these where we were when we started this imaginal work earlier in the day when the doubts crept in. Yeah. But see, this is the thing. You've got to have acceptance, and this is what Neville is talking about in this reading. When he's speaking of feeling, he doesn't mean emotion, but acceptance of the fact that the desire is fulfilled. That's living from the end result, and you've got to carry that 
living from the end result. My wish is fulfilled. Every time you get the doubt, you say, you breathe in, you breathe out. You say, I surrender my doubt. I'm going to live in the wish fulfilled. And you just make a decision to turn right instead of turning left and taking the doubt horse all the way to bloody whoop whoop, which is what we say in Australia, oh, <laughs> wherever say, that is. I've been there, you know. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> whoop. Hey. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. So I, and I just recently did a show kind of on the same topic where you going, yeah, I, I lost the, lost the train of thought where we were going with that. <laughs> a whoop, whoop, we went to whoop, whoop. I love it. You lost me at whoop, it's whoop. Taking, you know, it's done. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, we, Dan, yeah. it's just not going left because we just keep going left. He's seeing somebody else. She's, oh. um, I'm second best because he doesn't give me attention. She's not making plans with me or she keeps um, the common one I hear. She makes plans, but then she keeps canceling. So you've got this thing of I'm going to be let down. I'm going to be let down. I'm going to be let right. down. I'm going right. to be let down. Photocopy, photocopy, copy, cancel. I'm going to yeah. cancel. I'm going to cancel. That's how it works. It's not them canceling on you. You canceled out on you well before they made the phone call or well before they didn't ring you or well before they didn't show up. It's you, it's you, it's you. I keep saying it's yeah. you, it's you, it's we, you. But people keep thinking it's them, it's them, it's them. And what keeps happening when these people have these conversations internally amongst themselves, if you will, is, is they're imagining the person and having the conversation with the person. So it becomes an imaginal act when a lot of us are having this you know, yep. a little discussion in our head with them when we're mad and we start spinning these things down the wrong track. That's yep. exactly what we're doing is we're using Neville Goddard's technique to create a bad reality. Yep. And that's yep. all you're doing. So the way to get back, yep. and this is what I was forgetting to talk about, but the other thing that Neville talks about is it's the creator within us. And it's when we accept that the imaginal work is doing the creation. Yes. And once yeah. you have imagined as if you were there or from that reality or whatever, you know, from that place, mm. it becomes so real. You feel it, you smell it, you taste it. And when yeah. it's that real internally, it yeah. is real externally. It hasn't yes. manifested yet because 3D uh, world is slow. Yeah. But it is in progress. And the problem is, is when during the day we doubt it and start going down a different path, then we actually start to go opposite of what we just manifested in the morning, yep. right? Or at yep. night, or at night, you know? Exactly, exactly. And like you said, once you know you've launched it, you've, you've got to practice acceptance. Now, the way you get good at acceptance is if you've done it once and it's manifested something, you get more confidence. But you've got to manifest that first one first to get that confidence. And then the second one, the third. And then you know every time I launch something, and I just go, I accept and surrender that this is done. And you just state it to yourself and you just go, I let it go. I'll imagine it again tonight when I go to bed or I might leave it for a couple of days and I'll imagine it again. But you have to practice acceptance. It's not just you get acceptance. It's a skill like surrender. These are the things that are more challenging skills, acceptance and surrender because they're inactivity. Right. Right. People find the doing stuff easier than the inactivity. Allowing, acceptance, and surrender are the three silent triplets that people have trouble with. But these are the keys that open the master door. And that's really the thing, as we've talked about before, is really once you do the asking, the, the imagining, the feeling, you're from that location. And really, a lot of times, if it's so real, and then you literally just kind of forget about it. We, yeah. you know, it may not happen. It may, it takes as long as it does, but it, it's just amazing how a lot of times it's the doubt processes that all of us experience from time to time. Some of us more than others, yeah. but it's dealing with that. It's catching that quickly. It's looking at it and going, okay, whoa, you know, like let's, mm. let's prune the thoughts as right. Isn't that a technique that uh, Goddard talks about where you, yeah. you know, help kind of shift your thoughts during the day? Cause again, it's what we're thinking during the day and you know, what we're feeling, right? Again, these, yeah. these two things need to need to work together. Yeah. And if, if yeah. you're thinking something that's not feeling good, you're not helping your manifestation no, at all. That's exactly right. And, you know, maybe we can do a show at some point about the pruning shears and revision because that is a really big subject all on its own, how you do that. So we'll, we'll earmark that yeah, as a I to like be that. continued. Maybe next one, yeah. Because the fact that you brought that up, I mean, I think that's, you know, a fantastic Neville Goddard thing that he talks about. But, yeah, this whole thing of realising that, you know, as he says, 
and, and this was the last part of what I wrote down, all cause is spiritual. If your world is not the way you want it, there's some imaginal act in your mind that's keeping the unwanted experience alive. So this is what you're talking about is we've got to watch that stuff and stop keeping it alive, whatever the unwanted is, a third party, my person's absence, my person's married to someone and I'd like to be with them but I don't want to interfere. All these things are kept alive in us through some imaginal act of ours. Perfect example of how this plays out in the real world. You'll love this because you hear about it all the time too. But it's like we've got this this fear going inside of us, right? What's he doing? I don't think he's, I think he's cheating on me. I think, right? So that's our fear. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to check Facebook, right? You get that yeah. crazy inkling. You're like, oh, I know this is a great idea. And you, yeah. you open it up and there's a picture of him and some girl. And instantly, you know, it's exactly what you were asking for, even though it might be a yeah. sister, who knows, doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, but there, yeah. boom. And there's your wish fulfilled. There's, there's your, your wish fulfilled. There's exactly what you've been giving energy mm. to. And you felt the perfect timing because, again, our higher selves, at least the crazy stuff I say, love to get us connected with what we're trying to accomplish. Yep. So you're talking about, you know, having this uh, cheating guy in your life. Well, there you go. Now you got yep. it. And so, yep. yeah, I think people forget that it plays out because of us. If we look at how yep. this whole Neville Goddard thing works out, when we do it in a negative fashion, it, mm. it, it works negatively also. <laughs> yeah. And, and that thing of seed time in the harvest, which oh, never talks was about. Beautiful. That was awesome. Yeah. You that... forget you've planted seeds and then you get an unsavory harvest and you go, well, I didn't plant that. Right. It's like, well, yeah, you did. You just don't remember what you planted because yep. it was six months ago or eight months ago, but you, you were planting. Well, that reminds me, by the way, and that's why I thought you were going, but that's even better that you went there first. The part where you talked about, was it the walnut seed? What was the other seed that they mentioned of, you know, it's almost like the, to me, it reminded me of the faith of the mustard seed, but he talked about oh, yeah. in, in your reading, uh, in the, in Sammy's question, he talks about, uh, the, the seed becoming the tree and not worrying about the how, right? Wasn't that yes. all a part of that? And I thought that was a brilliant, like you could mm. almost do a whole another video on that on yep. yourself, but don't worry yeah. about the how. And I think so many of us get bogged yeah. down in that. Well, how can this happen? I don't know if that can yeah. happen. He's with a girlfriend right now. He just yeah. got a new girlfriend. Like how many times yeah. have you heard that one before? So in yeah. their minds are worried about the <clears throat> how. The how can't happen because he's currently got yeah. a girlfriend. So I, I Yeah, but the thing is it's like nothing's set in stone. Right. So, you know, I get quite a few success stories where people – through their jealousy, through their fear of loss, through their fear of betrayal and all this stuff, their pers person went away and then they get on YouTube, they find, you know, me, they find you, they find other law of attraction people, they start doing the work, then they go through a period of not contacting. They, they go through usually a period of over-contacting, right. then they learn stuff, they stop contacting, they stop over-contacting and then when they do contact, if they do it at all, they do it from a self-loving place. And then they do more and more and more work about giving rather than trying to get. And then the person who's might be off with somebody else by now starts to slowly, you see, make their way back because you've changed you yep. and you're giving love to them rather than trying to suck love out of them and then becoming your oxygen and tank. You you've feel, learned the difference. You feel similar to how you did when you first met or whatever. It gets back yeah. to that, that wonderful, yeah. thing. yes, that healthy, healthy love. That healthy love where you are giving and not just trying to get for yourself and you are allowing rather than trying to force and manipulate. So you learn so much about what you do that actually repels people and then you learn how to do the opposite, which attracts people. And it's a science. Right. And well, I keep talking about it and you bring it up and it's like, you know, it's a lot of Neville Goddard stuff, but thought transmissions, man. Every time we yeah. start thinking anything about anybody, I mean, the way I kind of phrase it too is you're, you create a thought bridge instantly, boom, between you and I, you know, right now yeah. there's a thought bridge. You and I are, you know, connected in a very cool way. But the second you think of someone and then all your yeah. feelings start bouncing back to them yeah and yeah. they may not consciously get it, whatever it doesn't matter that's the yeah. energy you're sending if and so yeah. if you're truly interested in making a difference and getting someone back to you having anger resentment frustration like all these feelings that yeah. suck like if the guy's already gotten away or the girl's already gotten away it's like if you're not feeling good to get back to why would i want to exactly so so the the journey is never between you and a specific someone or you and an ex or whatever, it's between you 
and your emotions. Yeah, it's, that's the us that's pushed out to journey. me. In a hu- yes, yeah. and it's learning to, again, thoughts and feelings, man. It's just, yeah. a, it is such an yeah. amazing. Yeah, because journey. you're emotionally really unattractive when yep. you're in longing, neediness, anger, yes. resentment. You owe me. You said you would do punishing, blame, all that stuff. You're extremely unemotionally unattractive. So people go, don't yeah. want to be with you. Yeah. As soon as you stop or you clear out all that stuff, because you do need to clear it out, on, you know, it takes time. And then eventually you realize it was all your creation anyway. So the forgiveness isn't about them. It's about you. And then you go, okay, well, I didn't know any better. So now I know better. I can do better. And then you start to have a fresh slate to work from. That's exactly what I just talked about in my video I released today, this morning, was uh, yeah. uh, the forgiving. Uh, and and yeah. it's all about forgiving ourselves. I said, it doesn't matter if they say sorry. And I even said that in another show. Like, does, mm. does saying sorry really matter? Does it change yeah. anything? If I say I'm yeah. sorry, it's like it still happened, right? It so still happened. The forgiveness yeah. is for us, yeah. man. It doesn't matter yeah. what, where they're at with it. It's how we can go on and yep. feel one of the yep. pumps, right? How we can feel better. And yeah. if we're feeling better, then things are definitely going in the mm. right direction. It's just a good gauge, right? Wouldn't you agree? Like, it is. If you're feeling pretty good, then your thoughts are probably pretty good. If your thoughts yeah. are pretty good, you're probably feeling pretty good. But either way, like look at either one of them <laughs> and you're probably, yeah. you can gauge how you're doing right now. It's like you're a tachometer in a car, right? Your RPMs, yeah. right? Or, your RPMs. Or RPKs yeah, yeah. or whatever they are, right? And so, yeah. yeah and, and, and if you want to accelerate to get the RPMs up, you do self-love, yeah. imaginal Boom. scenes. Yes. You do lots of meditation. Now you your engine's running. got more power. You're yeah. Clean. So you've... <laughs> yes. And Actually, Dan, we'll put, we'll put that YouTube you mentioned of yours in the description too, so people can have a look at that. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Nice, nice. I, li- I like to tack everything that we've talked about in the description so people don't have to look for it. So we did talk about the one question. I think I just have one last question that we probably can hopefully cover. I know we're maybe a little long, but whatever. Um, it does, no, it's okay. You did mention in the 30-minute uh, Sammy's video, one, one question I had that I thought was kind yeah. of interesting is you talk about, uh, and, and please phrase it correctly, but it was to the sense of where we kind of use this imagining morning, noon, and night, I think, right? All day long yes. or whatever. Um, yeah. so does that like, is it the, what does that mean? Kind of help me understand that. Cause I guess okay. initially I thought it felt more like it was like, should I be imagining the same things all day long? Yeah. Or, all day long. Or do I, I don't know. I, and, uh, so yeah. What do you think? What do you okay. Talk to me. Goose. Good point. Yeah. So obviously when you're trying to go to work, have a shower, do your dishes, cook your food, do your food shopping, you can't be imagining. It's just not going to happen. It's too much going on. So what you do is Obviously, when you're at work, you need to concentrate. So we'll eliminate that. When you're at sleep, asleep, you're asleep. So you eliminate that. But what's left in time in your 24-hour day, you do your imaginal scene at night, implying the end result that you want. Let's, say, let's use example, specific person. You're laying in bed together. You're naked. You're feeling warm and close and secure and mm-mm-mm happening. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Is that? Oh, my. Sorry. I got carried away with a the moment there for a second. Sorry about that. That was good timing. Very good timing. <laughs> I was so, almost done too. Oh my okay. lord! Oh my. We're gonna rewind. Yeah. You're back in bed. Yeah, bam, And mm-hmm, you're you're cozy. Yeah. You're under your white doona, your duvet, or your quilt, whatever country you live in. You yes. got a million different words for the same thing. <laughs> comforter. So you're in comforter. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so you're in there, and you're all cozy, and you're imagining the the smell of her or her hair down her back. You can see the color. You can smell her deodorant or whatever perfume she wears. And you, as the female, can feel the five o'clock shadow. You can feel the little hairs on his chest on your back. You can feel that just, you know, that masculine shape that's different to the female shape, of course. Mm. And look, and you can do this if you're gay, if you're straight, it makes no difference. Imagine the other person's qualities. So once you do that, you go to sleep and you fall asleep in that state. The next morning you get up, you're getting ready for work. So before you get up, you close your eyes for about three minutes and you go, hmm, and you just flash in that scene, being in bed, the warmth, the smell, the closest, the security, the affection, you lock it in. You get out of bed, you feel good about that. You take the aroma of it, the feeling of it, So that's where you're living from it. 
you go and put the kettle on. You stand there, you're waiting for the kettle to boil. You shut your eyes for a minute and you just go, ah, oh, I love that connectedness. I love that feeling of closeness. Beep, the kettle starts, pour your cup of tea, da, da, da. You have your cup of tea, you're having your breakfast. You carry that with you. Oh, I love thinking about that. I love them sitting next to me and having breakfast with me in the morning. So you just have a little one-minute thing here and there. In the meantime, you're reading the newspaper, hop in the shower. Same thing. You carry little snippets of it with you. If you're driving to work or you're on public transport, catching a bus or a train, you can easily, obviously not if you're driving your own car, shut your eyes and do a little bit more. Then you're on your lunch break. You go and sit somewhere outside and you enjoy nature. You shut your eyes for a few minutes. You might be with people that lunch hour. You don't do it on that lunch hour. You might do it the next day when you're on your own. So you fit in little kind of two minutes, one minute, three minutes, four minutes. At the end of a week, that's two hours. And a couple of things that I think are important to point out too at this point, which I love I love how you describe that. It's really, really awesome. Is, is one, using all of your... Uh, free time if you're truly interested yep. in making a difference in your manifestation or the timing of it or whatever the case mm. is and you're going to be focused on these things using your time to imagine because that's what your free time is is your free thought time is free time to imagine things and yep. imagine is creation and on top of that which i also liked is you had slightly different variants of where you were in the day with your significant person and so yeah. it's not the same imagery no. over and over and over it's a no. mixture of what it would be like in real life, a real day when yep. we're together. So living in the end from that standpoint as well is yep. it's not just that same image like, oh, we're together. Because that really doesn't mean a whole lot. What is together? I know well, and that's that are... not how relationships are. Right. Like if I see when I was doing my imaginal scene at night, I would always do the same scene over and over and over at night. Right. I would do the laying in bed but together. But the bed thing, doing... that's awesome because that's sleeping together. Yeah. That's like what you would and you're do in during bed that already. time of day. Yeah. 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 And you're in bed. So it makes sense. Perfect. You've already got the bed yeah. underneath you. you got the pillow underneath you. And that's you. a freaking awesome way to fall asleep. Hello. You know, yeah, like, it can't is. even imagine, right? You're actually with yeah. your person. That's like, how, yeah. can that not, how can that not be any better than, than anything else? Exactly. Them? Exactly. So that one was seen relevant. You're in the bed yeah. about to sleep, so let's imagine that because I'm in the bed anyway. So that one was relevant. But throughout the day, I would daydream about, oh, I'd love to walk down the street. Like I'd be walking down the street while I was on my lunch break right. and I'd think, oh, I'd love to walk down this street with him and I'd just pretend we were holding hands and then I'd Or how fun it would be go. to go to that cafe that you just yeah. walked by together. Yeah. Like that was such or a great place. Or he'd love that. And, yes, yeah. exactly. Or yeah. she loves that yes. color of t-shirt that you just see in the window or right. whatever you know certain things about your person so right. you pull from what you see certain things will come into the foreground she loves the color green or he loves that now, blue and, and now to go and back to the funny color. part right with all yeah. these thoughts what's probably happening with your feelings when you're doing all this work during the day what are you probably yeah you're feeling awesome and that dan is living from it yes there and, is. and just to throw the other aspect to it you don't have time to doubt. You don't yeah, have no. time. You're busy imagining what you'd like to experience exactly. rather than freaking out about what you don't yeah. want to experience. And it's a, exactly. the different. That's how you do it. That is, Anya's just perfectly yeah. demonstrated a day in the life if you're actually serious mm. about making a difference and trying to manifest something. That's it. That's yeah. how you do it. All that's how you do it. Live from and it. And that's the mechanics of, because we all have things we have to do. Some people have kids. Some people have more than one job. Some people commute long distances. Other people have pets they have to look after. Other people have parents they have that are elderly. So there's lots of things that have to fill people's day. So obviously when you're doing that, you focus. You don't zone out and right. think about all this stuff all day. Um, focus on what you're doing. And then when you have idle moments, you use them That's properly. Right. And yes, yes, you don't misuse them because whatever yeah. we focus our attention on, our thoughts, our feelings, right? Whatever you start thinking about, you're putting yeah. more feeling towards that. And is it a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah. Ella Way would say, is it upstream or is it downstream? Yeah. Ella Goddard would say, you're creating, you're imagining. Like, yeah. nobody but the thing is, Dan, says it's good if it's bad. 
Right? Yeah, yeah. It's the thing when you're actually doing that imaginal process, you don't go, oh, I have to feel good about this. I've got to pump up my feeling. Right. The feeling happens yeah. as a chemical reaction. Yeah. Yes. It just good happens. Point. Very good point. So it's like I remember when I was feeling really, really bad, like we're talking minus one out of ten. Everything, The wheels fell off everything, and I'm not going to go over it again because we've talked about right. it before. Yeah. Yeah. But I was minus one out of ten. I couldn't even imagine anything. I felt so awful. But what I would do was I'd put on Abraham Hicks or Neville on I, on YouTube and I would just shut my eyes and I would listen. That was back and when you'd after, go to the beach too, right? Wasn't that? The, yeah. 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 So it was like I can, I don't have the energy to pull myself out of this hole, yeah. but I have got ears that will listen. Yeah. And what would happen is I remember listening to Esther at the time and Neville and it would slowly winch me out of the hole without me having to do anything. Then once I was at about a five or a six out of 10, then I could imagine and do my own work. Right. So I made it easy for myself in the beginning, get them to do the work for you and remind you of what you've totally forgotten. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Is this where we sing hallelujah? I think this is. I think this is where the <laughs> lights get really bright and the angels, oh, right? You got that going on? Yeah, it's done. And, Ah, right, just and little babies come out, and yeah, no, that little puppies they walk in. That's we'll bring all the graphics yeah. in when we get done through production, <laughs> of course. Oh, this was a good one. I, I, uh, I think we pulled yes. off a, another really good show. Um, oh. I, I think, um, definitely some future stuff can come out of this for sure. Yeah, there's uh, I think this is what I think people are really needing right now, Dan, from you, from me, and from people that do LOA. A hug. Giving. <laughs> that too. Yeah. Is the mechanics of A to B, B to C, C to D. Yeah. When I'm w w moving through my day, how yeah. do you do it? Yeah. So it's showing people and using examples of how you do it. And this is what makes it easy because there's so much LOA stuff. There's so much Neville stuff. There's so much Abraham Hicks, the secret and on and on it goes. It's trying to squeeze it all into one little thing. What do right. I do today right. to help me with this? Well, not just that too, but think people are an array of, of aspects in their life. Some are in far more negative needy and some are yeah. barely doubt, but just want a little sort of, you know, you yes. can do this. And so yeah. again, yeah, you're right. It's the trying to help with these, and I, I call it techniques oftentimes because there's a lot of different little techniques you can try depending on where you're at. And, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, there's been times where I've been so frustrated, like the idea of completely letting go. I've brought up this a lot of times. Yeah. Actually helped get me back to a good place because I just, gave <sighs> up, I like, yeah, it's just a chance to just like, all right, let's just let the dust settle and see how I yeah. feel in a week. You're like, this, this is ridiculous, right? Like, you yeah. can always change your mind. I never, ever yeah. did any damage to myself. So, Again, there's yeah. techniques, and I think a lot yeah. of it is trying to, like you said, get through the day because that's where the hard part is. The easy part's like going to bed at night and imagining being with them. I'm like, that's just yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's, it's the, uh, the rest, rest of, of the, the day. day. Yeah. 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 And yeah. letting ourselves spin down a bad path or like you were mm. doing, like, oh, it'd be so great to go to this cafe or, oh, I'd love to have, you know, come down here and maybe feed the ducks or something. I don't know, whatever the hell. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Whatever, whatever floats people's boats, if you want. Exactly. Very good. And, you know, from having coached people from all over the world, this is the thing that fascinates me. It doesn't matter if someone's in Saudi Arabia, in Iceland, in Australia, in the U.S., in England or in France. People want to just sit on the couch with their specific person and watch yeah, a movie. Yeah. They don't want, you know, it doesn't need to be huge. It's ordinary moments. They want to just feel secure and loved in an ordinary day. It's, that's and all. That, and that's where we spend most of our days. I mean, I'll, I'll And say that's that, where we spend most that, of our days. I mean, yeah, those are the those are the things I typically mm. imagine are the day to days or the, you know, the Yeah. The fun and moments. that's I think Dan the thing that really helped me was imagining him, you know, making me a cup of tea in the morning and yeah. you know, he made me a cup of tea the other day and I thought, "Oh, that's funny." Yeah. I've forgotten I even imagined that. Right, but, right. But here he, he didn't even ask me because I was half knocked out still because I'm not a morning person. Right. And he showed up with a hatch. cup of, yeah, I don't hatch easily. Yes. <laughs> I hatch in a deformed state. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he knows that. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so that cup of tea was like, you know, I didn't say anything, but I thought, hmm, that's interesting. That little tiny, totally ordinary, insignificant thing was something I imagined 
three years ago as part of my regular nightly routine was him bringing me a cup of tea in the morning. That's so everyday-ish. It's yeah. nothing in flash. No, but it's awesome. But it At meant something. Yeah. It says... I'm loved yep. and I think and of I you. And I was thinking of you, exactly. That's what it yeah. is. I knew you would like some tea. Yeah. Especially when so you're first you waking go. up. And I know he probably didn't say yeah. a word because you're not allowed. I know that. No. Yeah, you don't talk no. to Anya's first two hours. <laughs> oh, no, you do not. He tries. Oh, he tries. Does he? <laughs> oh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. Because then he can say later, don't you remember? I told you that mm, this morning. Yeah, no. <laughs> and then you follow up with, well, don't you remember? I've told you. Don't, don't talk to me. So I, I don't, it's not. Sorry. It doesn't count. It yeah. doesn't. Um, yeah. You're going to have to reiterate. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I love from, it. From, eight, from 7 till 9, 30, 10 has the cloud, the, the I, fog cloud over yeah, You the like that, uh, that Peanuts uh, cartoon character, uh, the one that had all the dust cloud around him the whole time? Yes, Linus. Yeah, Linus. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Can't, don't talk to That's been yet. one of my nicknames <laughs> over the years. Is it really? oh, funny. <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. Yeah. Well, very well, good. Another awesome excellent. show, by the way. Thank you. I think we've done it. Yes. Beautiful. All right. Well, we will sign off. Yes, and, definitely. Um, and, uh, I will thank, wait and, for you and, behind the scenes. Absolutely. Likewise. And uh, hopefully, <laughs> uh, hopefully everybody enjoys, uh, enjoys what we were talking about. I think it's hugely <laughs> helpful. And it's always awesome to get a little bit of Anya's time for sure. And you too, Dan. I love my time with you. Oh, shucks, it's, man. It's, it changes just YouTubing on your own, doesn't it? It sure does. It makes it a lot more fun. <laughs> it does. Yes. Well, okay. Lots right, of love, bye, everybody. Sweetie. Yeah, yeah. Hugs. <laughs>